Welcome back to Feature Friday. I'm Matt Hampton here at the AEI Startup Factory, and I have one of my great friends and colleagues, Jason Bittar, here with me today. Jason, thanks for coming on Feature Friday. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So this segment of Feature Friday is all about food in Stonecrest. We oftentimes hear, anytime you go anywhere in our community, we have a lack of great food establishments here in Stonecrest. And so Jason is a friend of mine, and he's going to help us solve that problem. But Jason, before we get into the problem, tell us a little bit about your company and what you do on a daily basis as an entrepreneur. So um, I'm a consultant and a mentor. I help uh, individuals start businesses, and if they already have a business, I help them with you know, growing it, and if they're dealing with issues, uh, it's always good to have uh, eyes look out from the outside of the business and see what are the issues that need to be dealt with. Okay. And in your role, kind of, how do you deal with that? What do you do for folks? Well, if it's a, if it's a startup, I help them uh, get their idea or concept together, make it viable, and uh, do a feasibility study for that, and then eventually put a, a business plan together so that we can actually take that to lenders or investors or even if they want to have a partner so that they can sell that idea if it's a restaurant, of course, or if it's a food truck, whatever the case may be, so that there are you know, numbers behind it that can uh, support that. Great. And, and so I, was, I met Jason at a networking event a few months ago, and we struck up a conversation about restaurants. Uh, and that's one of his areas of specialty, of expertise, if you would. Uh, and I was telling him about our unique challenges here in Stonecrest. And so on this segment today, we're talking about Stonecrest restaurants, the food challenges that we have out here, and how do we come up with solutions. And so what are some of the things that you've done in the food business in particular? How, give me an example of some ways that you've helped food-based restaurants or entrepreneurs bring their ideas on, on, on home and make it happen. So let me just give you a small background, the bio on myself. Okay. I'm a Georgia Tech grad, and I have a, a master's degree in marketing from Georgia State. And I've been in the restaurant industry for about 30 years. Wow. I have opened restaurants and consulted with uh, several uh, entrepreneurs who started their uh, business, restaurants or food trucks um, and food service uh, ideas. Um, so what I see is that a lot of people have this romantic idea of opening a restaurant. Right. And they, they want to be the person that, you know, mingles with his clients and customers in the restaurant. That, but what they don't understand is that 90% of the restaurant is in the kitchen. It, the planning is from there. Pre-opening and during operations, that's the main heart of the restaurant. Okay. I mean, you can be in the front, great, but you have to make sure that all your bases are covered in the back, back right. of the, uh, the restaurant. Right. So um, what I see these days is uh, there are a lot of cus companies opening a Me Too kind of restaurant. It's a burger joint. It's a burger joint with a little bit of differentiation. You need to have more differentiation in this day and age. People are more, uh, have become more <laughs> selective with their taste buds. Right. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there because you're hitting on one of the key parts of our challenge in Stonecrest. If you want a chicken wing, you can find a chicken wing in Stonecrest <laughs> on almost every block. And so many of our restaurants in our communities, they are like chicken wings, the chicken shacks. I mean, chicken, chicken, chicken. We got chicken and stone crust <laughs> covered. You can have chicken five different ways on Turner Hill. And so we do a lot of chicken. Uh, we do see a lot of burger joints. And so you're right. It is, and you see like the, just the, the same kind of takeout places. So it is our, our community. It definitely, I think, suffers. Not suffers, but we have a lot of the same stuff repeating over and over again. So I think that's one of the first really jewels you've given us this morning, too, is You've got to differentiate. So Not only differentiate, keep going. but have a variety of offerings. Okay. Rather than just stick to, like you said, chicken, chicken, chicken is chicken. You can still have a chicken with multiple flavors. I mean, you have, if it's an ethnic cuisine, it's always good to bring in those spices, the, you know, the curries and what have you. It just changes the feel of exactly. the dish. And it makes it, you know, different. So people can try it today and try a different kind of chicken tomorrow. But... It's very important to step away from the me too's, you know, just being the same as everybody else, because at the end of the day, people will get tired of chicken wings. Exactly. And they might not know that they are tired of it because they don't have any other options. So you have to provide other options. And this is part of what I help with is creating that option, that differentiation in the, the menu and in the, the, the totality of the restaurant. Okay. So I think... This neighborhood and this, this city needs to have maybe a lot more smaller scale, you know, for lack of a better word, more gourmetish, meaning 
different flavors that are, you know, can supplement what's out there. So exactly. that people don't get tired of one thing and, you know, have no option. So yeah. you can bring them in during the week and during the weekends. Right. And that's one of the other challenges that we face in this community is I think folks have kind of looked and said, when I go to other communities, I see a cheesecake factory. I see a Mariano, Maggiano's, and I want those big footprints. Like, why can't I have that? Because when I go out on, on the weekends, the restaurants are packed. I can't get in, and I want to spend my money on a good quality restaurant. And so, you know, in a community like this, uh, that just sometimes that doesn't work. Well, if you don't have a, you know. And it's uh, not here, so it, it ain't here. Well, there's a reason for why it's not here. Okay. Because there's not a sufficient population, probably, <clears throat> to sustain a big operation. So for those who are interested in opening a, a food service business in, in, in Stonecrest, it might be a great idea to have it on a smaller scale that can actually sustain itself and be full all week, not just on the weekends. So that's one thing that you have to look at. It's what, what's out there and what's, why there are some things or some concepts that are not here. Exactly. These people have market research departments. They do focus groups. They understand the, the, the viability of such a restaurant that size in different neighborhoods and areas. So if it's not here, it's probably because they know that they will be busy during the weekend, but the rest of the week they might be dead or not viable to operate the rest of the weekend. So that's why they might not be in here. Right. And I think, that, I think you're exactly right. Um, and that's one of the things our founder, Mr. Allen, always talks about. You've got to start with the money. And you got to start with the fundamentals of the business. And what we're basically are talking about is just supply and demand. Correct. But the thing that, that, again, this show is all about, what we're trying to do with this Feature Friday, that's where the opportunity is, is to have the right size restaurant, to have the right size footprint, so that you don't get in over your head as an entrepreneur and have you know too much going if you try to supply that, right? And so I think that's one of the beauties, um, Jason, of Stonecrest right now is that we are at that you kind of like we are at the ground floor in a lot of ways because they're the corporate establishments aren't here so you really can create a space for yourself and create a lane uh and as the community grows we hope that those businesses will grow um so yeah you you you, you hit it right on the head i mean many times <clears throat> people uh think that you have to have i mean the the uh the famous and more popular thing that people say when you want to open a restaurant is location, location, location. But sometimes you can open a restaurant that's a destination, meaning that you are so different, so unique, that people will drive to your place because there's nobody else like you. This is a viable concept. So if you have something unique, you have a chef that's very creative or you have a unique offering, some people will drive to have that food because they can't find it anywhere else. So as much as location is a true fact, it's also not the only fact. Uh. So you can have a restaurant that is, and they call it a destination restaurant, meaning wow. people are willing to drive 10 miles, 5 miles, whatever the case may be, because there's nobody else offering that, and they want to be part of it. They want to try it. They want to, you know. Experience Experience it. it. Exactly. exactly. So, so, but here you have sufficient locations, and I think it might be viable to look into what is not being offered as a cuisine and try okay. and focus on that right. rather than, we want a big place that, because of its name, it is viable. And it's probably not viable because it's too big to operate. Okay. So, again, that's another major tidbit I think that you just gave entrepreneurs is that, and that's one of the other things is that, if, and I'm a nerd about entrepreneurship, and so I've read a lot of these economic development studies. And one of the things that we have in South DeKalb is the fact that we have such a diverse population. We have a lot of people from, uh, from, from other countries in this area and so we have a very diverse ethnic kind of flavor here and we're not leveraging that opportunity absolutely you know and i, I even have seen it with some of the events we've done here at the startup factory where we had <laughs> people from guyana and they introduced me to new drinks and new flavors and new food that i had never experienced and nobody is monetizing that uh in stonecrest and it also i think is a big and important part of our tourism play to give people those unique experiences. Oh, absolutely. And, and when you said that about location, you know, how does technology play into this nowadays? Because I think it, it probably does help mitigate the location issue of people searching for you. So how does technology kind of play into the restaurant game? Is well, so, so in the past, the, the concept of location, 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 it was because it's within the, 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 uh, the norms of traffic. 
Right. So people notice you, see you because of traffic. But nowadays, people can see you on the web traffic. Exactly. So they know of you, they hear about you, there are a lot of review sites, and people talk about it and post things on, on online. So as much as it is, it's still important, it's not detrimental. Exactly. So people can open a place where, you know, the word of mouth now travels much faster because it's online. In the old days, unless you met somebody, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't have the opportunity to tell them about the place that you went to. Yeah. But now you post it on, and everybody that's connected to you either exactly. reposts it or sees it. So that allows for the expansion of that, that uh, customer base. Exactly. So location is still important, but it's not as important as it used to be in the past. So you had to be in a shopping center, or you had to be in a, you know, a mall, or what have you. Now people can find you much easily mm -hmm. you know, online. Yeah. So... That has mitigated the problem of location. Cool. So, you know, as we transition here, we might as well just go ahead and let the cat out of the bag this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Jason and I are actually up to something. Uh, here at the Startup Factory, it's great to know about the, and understand the problem, right? But we've got to come with solutions. Correct. And so one of the programs that I've wanted to launch here at the Startup Factory since we started is a restaurant accelerator. Correct. And so, guys, I'm going to announce here today... We're hosting a new restaurant accelerator with Jason and his company. And in this accelerator, if you are an entrepreneur, an investor, uh, a chef, uh, or if you want to get in there, you got a great recipe, right? You're trying to get in the food business. We're going to introduce in, we started in June, right? Correct. Okay, we start in June, and we're going to introduce an eight-week accelerator where we're going to take you from the beginning concept all the way to the business plan and being able to launch the business. Uh, and I think we're going to incorporate some food elements as well and some tastings uh, right here at the Startup Factory. Uh, so tell me what you what you think about it and what you're excited about and kind of what people can look forward to learning uh, when they come to our accelerator classes over the next eight weeks starting in June. Well, we're basically going to go through all the stages of opening a restaurant from idea generation concept and, and go through all the issues that you have to deal with, uh, putting a name together setting the, uh, the menu, which is the most important variable in opening a restaurant. People think it's a, it's a second thought, but everything is based on the menu. If you understand your menu, you understand the space you need, you understand the type of chef you need, you understand the, the concept, the, the way it should look like, you understand your cost of goods and the equipment you're going to use. So the menu is the most essential part of a restaurant. So we're going to go through building a menu, we're going to go through all the financials that we, we need to take care of, then we're going to do marketing it and online marketing, building the website, uh, and put together a business plan. So if at the end of the, uh, the, the coursework, you should have something tangible in your hand to present to either investors or, like I said, lenders or partners even. And this, is, this course is not going to be only targeted towards people who want to start a business, but if you have a restaurant and you have a manager that you think is, is a, needs some kind of you know, general knowledge of a, a, what a restaurant needs to be, um, you know, worked in and done with, this is a good course to take because it will introduce the, the, the manager to multiple things that they might not ha are aware of or they don't have the time to you know, gather that information. So this will help your managers be better managers and have a better understanding of operating a restaurant. Yeah. And, and from the startup factory side of this, we always believe that, this is going to be part of our Blueprint series. And in our Blueprint series, we do less talking and more working. And so our concept of this is as, a, as entrepreneurs, you will come here and work on those topics that we cover in class. Uh, you'll get things done. Uh, and then we'll come out of it with a viable product. Also, one of the things that we're going to introduce in this is going to be a few tastings to where people will come and taste your food. But then we're also going to conclude this segment with a pop-up restaurant, and we're going to invite all of Stonecrest here to look at the new restaurant concepts that we're bringing forth here in Stonecrest, Georgia. And so we are going to host a series that is all about creating the solutions to many of the challenges that we see here in Stonecrest as it relates to food. And I'm excited to be partnering with you on that, and I'm looking forward to us. Like, really, at the end of the day, I want to see a brand-new restaurant created in, in Stonecrest, at least one. <laughs> After we finish this class, then we got to get at least one, Jason. But, but, but again, the beauty, <laughs> but the beauty of having it here is we have an actual commercial kitchen that we can do some some testing and sampling, and also have a better feel of what the kitchen yeah. operations are like. It's not just talk on the board or on a screen, but we're going to actually have hands-on work 
that will allow a lot of people to get some of the fear of being in the kitchen, such as managers that don't know anything about cooking, to get that fear out because they need to understand what, what goes in the kitchen. Yeah, definitely. And then we also are going uh, in true AEI style and, and following the uh, lead of our visionary leader, Mr. Bill Allen. We also will be bringing in entrepreneurs and restaurateurs who've done it and who can tell you exactly how they've done it right here in our community. And some of them will be on our show today. They don't know, but I'm going to recruit them into our program. <laughs> but we're going to be bringing you real entrepreneurs and people who know how to get the deal together. And also, we're going to be bringing in financial folks. Absolutely. And so I have some bankers. We have some financial institutions that focus on restaurants that will be a part of this training. And so we're extremely excited uh, to be creating the solutions. And coming up with, I, 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 look, I'm gonna create one out of this. I, Mr. Don't tell Mr. Allen, but I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get something out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help you. Yeah, but no, I'm looking forward to it. So, Jason, um, if you could, let's just give him a little bit of a tidbit. Give him maybe like some of your, maybe like your top five tips for restaurant owners or people in the restaurant business of things they should be watching out for. Give me your top three. So give I mean, this is just a little flavor, a bit of what you're gonna get when you come to this success. So it's uh, you know a, ma many people you know don't think of these things, but um, you know you go to a um, uh, cheesecake factory, okay, and you get a plate this big, and you start eating, and you know one third of it is do is done, and you're sick and tired of it because it's too big, it's monotonous, it's there's not change in the flavor. So one of the things that now has become very popular is the small plates. People like to have more, you can call them appetizers, some people call them tapas. You want to have a variety of those on your menus that somebody can actually have a meal by combining several of them. So they have a variety of things on their, you know, that they're eating from. Okay. They're not stuck with one dish. The other thing is a lot of restaurateurs don't realize that a big chunk of the, the issues that they might have is the waste. How much are you wasting food? So if your people in the kitchen are not aware of dating things, making sure that they, th these things are still not, uh, you know, still not expired and they can be used, then you are saving yourself a lot of money because when you over order and things expire in a restaurant, a lot of things expire and you're dumping that stuff because you can't use it. That's a lot of cost, waste. The second and third most important thing is that cleanliness is extremely important. And I can tell you this, when I walked into a restaurant, the first thing I do is I go to the restrooms. Because if the restrooms are clean, it tells me a lot about the kitchen and everybody else. Because if the if the if the bathroom is not in good shape, is dilapidated, is not clean, that tells me that people don't care. And if they don't care in the bathroom, they definitely are not going to care in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yep. So these are very important things that to be wow. attentive to. And then consistency of the the recipe. You know, McDonald's is famous for that. You know, Ray Kroc's one of his biggest mantra was. Consistency of the food. So if you go to uh, a McDonald's in, in Beijing, it's going to taste exactly the same as the one in New York or the one in Atlanta or down the street. Mm -hmm. Because you're going there to eat and you don't want to have any risk. You're reducing the risk on the customer that it's going to taste different or not good or whatever. But when you walk into a McDonald's, you know exactly how it's going to taste. There's no if, buts, and whens. This is how it tastes. So consistency is very important. My last tip is this. Majority of customers will walk into your, kitchen, into your restaurant and will order a dish. If they like that dish, they will be coming back for that specific dish. 90% mm -hmm. of the time, they're going to come back because, oh, I like this lasagna. I feel like a lasagna today. They're going to go to that place that they like the lasagna in. They're not going to try somewhere else. It's very important when you have that customer come back is to introduce them to something different. So that they'll go, they don't get sick and tired of the lasagna and they come back for something else as well. So it's very important to give tastings every once in a while to your regular customers uh, so that they come back for something different. Yeah. Man. Is that enough? That's enough. <laughs> I think that's excellent. Man, so again, if you're out there, and again, I'm glad you mentioned that too. If you're managing a restaurant or an owner of a restaurant, you want your managers to become better at the business of the restaurant, that's that's who we're looking for for this restaurant accelerator. If you out there, you know, man, I got this great recipe. I can I can cook my butt off, and I just need to be in the restaurant business. Come here to learn the fundamentals 
of how to build the business around that. Because one of the things is that in our community, we know, we know how to cook some food, right? But that doesn't always mean that you need to be in a food business. And so, again, this will give you an opportunity to explore. Do you really want to be in this business? Because I heard that, you know, it's restaurant business is the easiest business in the world. You only work half days, right? Absolutely, yes. So which 12 hours of the day do you want to work, right? <laughs> and so you need to understand that this is really what you want to do. If you're a chef, if you're a creative, if you love to be in the kitchen and you want to find a business partner or an investor, this could be a great class for you. If you want to be one of the investors in this industry, you can learn the fundamentals as well through this accelerator. Absolutely. So we're excited to announce this accelerator. Uh, we're excited to have you all meet Jason and for you to come and help us solve some problems over Absolutely. here in Stonecrest, Georgia. Uh, and so with that, Jason, is there any parting words that you want to give our entrepreneurs, uh, our folks watching Startup uh, the Feature Friday today? Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. This has been quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to this course. I think it's going to be very beneficial for to a lot of people who are uh, interested in it. And thank you for coming up with this idea to do this because I think this is quite important to have it in in Stonecrest. Um, there is a need, and I think it's be it'll be very well worth it to get into that class and get your, your knowledge. Let's get it done. Absolutely. Yeah. So again. Thank you guys for joining us for this segment of Feature Friday. This is our food series, so we're talking all about food and how we solve the food challenges here in Stonecrest, Georgia. So we'll be right back with our next guest in just a moment. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you.